What you guys are looking at on the screen is one of my favorite quotes, which is, the power to question is the basis of all uh, human progress, right? And uh, one of the things I enjoy about attending an event like this, uh, Velocity, is that you get to learn a lot of the great tips, uh, a lot of the best practices, and you often leave with more questions um, afterwards, right? Which is, uh, we saw great presentations on optimizing CSS, JavaScript, and images. And uh, follow-up questions. Well, I wonder which sites are doing the best job of this? Which image formats are doing the best? Which web fonts are the most popular? Um, all of these questions are great. And not only that, but once you drill in and manage to find an answer to one of these, chances are there's 10 more. You always unlock more questions, right? Uh, the problem is these questions are only good if you can find answers to them and find answers to them easily. And uh, that's where I actually have two unfair advantages over you guys. So the first one is this. Uh, you might recognize this guy. In my day-to-day -day job at Google, I happen to share an office with Steve. So I have direct access to the HP archive data because I just turn to Steve and I say, hey, I wonder what is uh, the average size of the CSS file on the web. And then there's usually a period of silence or discussion as to whether that's even a relevant question to ask. Then there's some furious typing, and then the answer is 42. Or more specifically, I just ran a query on HP Archive, and the answer is 42 kilobytes. So Steve already mentioned, but if you guys are not familiar with HP Archive, it's a project that was started back in 2010. And what it does is it crawls the web twice a month. Uh, we track about 300,000 sites. And it records things like, what are the types of requests that the site is making? What are the image file types? What are the sizes? Um, all kinds of interesting analytics. And then the site itself actually surfaces quite a bit of data on, on the site. So you can look at um, interesting stats and trends. And if, if you guys haven't checked that out, I definitely encourage you to. But the data that's on the site is just the tip of the iceberg. It certainly surfaces some interesting stuff. But uh, if you pay attention here, there's a download link. And if you ever clicked on that link, you would actually find that there is all of the actual crawl data is available for you to grab as a SQL archive or a CSV. And there's, uh, in total, about 500 gigs worth of data, of just crawl data, uh, that you can import and analyze. So easy, right? Like, if you have all these questions, just import 500 gigs into your local SQL database, and um, you can answer all of the questions that you, know, that you wanted to know about web performance. And that's where I have a second unfair advantage. Turns out that at Google, we've actually built a lot of tools to help us um, make this process easy. So for example, we have Dremel, uh, which is an interactive tool that allows us to analyze data sets much, much larger than 500 gigabytes, right? And it's something that we use internally. But it turns out that we also made uh, Dremel available as a public product, which is Google BigQuery, which is how it's known uh, on the outside. So you put the two and two together and say, like, hey, we have all this raw data. We have BigQuery. Why don't we um, actually have it online and available? So I'm going to show you a demo here. Uh, what I'm looking at here is the BigQuery console. And I, I've imported all of the HTTP archive data, about half a terabyte of data, into BigQuery. And it's actually a public data set. So I'll share the details at the end. But you guys can just uh, go to bigquery.cloud.google.com, uh, and you can query it immediately without having to do any of the data imports. So that's the cool part. So if I, import, if I open this runs table, you can actually see that there's a lot of tables in here, which is all of the individual runs uh, of the HTTP archive data. So if I scroll all the way to the bottom, you see the last run uh, that was done um, earlier this month. We can look at the request table. And you can see that if I look at the details, it's about 21 gigs of data. There's 26 million records uh, in this table alone. So this is just one, this one run. And now we can actually start asking questions. So I have prepared some simple queries. So let me run this one first. So I'm curious to know, uh, what is the median render start time uh, for pages on the web today? Not average, but median, and also some you know, 75th and 90th percentile. So I can run the query. Um, and one second later, we have the answer. So the median time is about 2.2 seconds. And it turns out that this query actually it ran very fast, uh, in part because we're only selecting one specific column out of the entire data set. So BigQuery is smart enough uh, not to fetch the entire data set, but just the data that we need. So uh, that's kind of cool. And you can see that BigQuery actually provides a lot of additional functions like quantiles uh, on top of your regular kind of SQL syntax to make uh, uh, statistical approximations and other things very, uh, very simple and easy. 
So let's do something more ambitious. Uh, let's run a regular expression across the entire data set. So we'll do this. And wh what I'm curious about now is uh, which of the popular uh, JavaScript frameworks, or which JavaScript frameworks are popular on the web? All right, so let's run that. We can run an aggregation query. And you can see that the answer is jQuery is by far uh, the winner on the web today, right? So over, what is that, 168,000 sites. And the runner-up is prototype with 10,000 sites. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, but let's do something even more ambitious, which is I wonder how many sites use more than one JavaScript framework on their site, because you know one's not enough. Uh, so let's try this. And what we're going to do here is a little bit crazy. So I don't know if you guys can read that, but uh, we're going to do a regular expression match against all of the queries. We're going to extract uh, the actual name of the framework that's being used. We're going to count them. We're going to concatenate all of them, and then some other magic. So run the query. Uh, one second later, and there you have it. So Tumblr.com is using Prototype and jQuery. Apple is using Scriptaculous and Prototype. If we, so that's two, let's see, some sites, LA Times, using three, jQuery, Prototype, and Scriptaculous. Um, and there are many sites that are using four or more, uh, which is kind of curious. I wonder why that is. Um, so then for the last one that I want to show you here is, OK, great. So many sites are using different frameworks, but I wonder how many are using multiple instances of the same framework, because that's a good idea, right? Uh, so let's run this query. So what I'm going to look for here is <clears throat> I'm specifically looking for jQuery loaded from the Google CDN. Right? So this excludes a lot of the other jQueries out there, but just for sake of an example. So let's run this. And uh, there you have it. So we have Expedia.com using 164 and 180. So they're loading the two instances of jQuery on the same page. Reddit is using multiple instances. And uh, if we scroll further down, we actually have uh, some newspaper site that's using three versions of jQuery. Um, I think this is pretty awesome. <laughs> so um, all right, let me show you one more example, which is one feature that I think very few people know about, but once you discover it, I, I don't think you'll ever look at Google Docs uh, the same way again, is you can actually script uh, Google Docs. So what you can do here is you, go, you can go to, let's see, Tools, uh, Script Editor, and I have it open right here. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to script uh, your Google Docs, your spreadsheets, what have you, and actually make them uh, interoperate. So you can say, when I fill in this thing in my spreadsheet, send an email, or create a document, or do other things. So what I'm going to do here is I'm scripting this uh, spreadsheet that I have here. I'm going to create a dynamic query. right? So this is just the same query that I was showing you guys earlier. Uh, but I'm going to run it against a number of different dates. So I'm building the query here. And then I'm going to submit it to BigQuery. So I'm doing this right from uh, this tool here. I'm going to a little bit of code. And then at the end, I'm going to grab the data and put it into the spreadsheet. So let's see it in action. So here is the actual column that I want to grab. It's the bytes total. Let me go to, I created this little menu, run query. It's running the SQL query or the BigQuery um, in the background. It populates the table. And then I created a little chart here. And here is the actual. Uh, so this is total bytes over time, right? Median, 75th percentile, and 90th percentile. So this is cre created dynamically. We can change this to uh, start render. We can rerun the query once more. Now the question is, is it start render, or is it render start? It's render start. Render start. Run query again. So this is querying the live data set. And there you have it, right? So the, you have a live graph, and you can export that, and you can publish it somewhere else. And if you're curious about this bump and why it went down, it's actually because um, uh, HCP Archive switched to a different um, connection speed uh, when uh, running the tests and web page tests recently, uh, back in April. So all of this is available for you. Let me go back. Uh, you can play with this data yourself. If you follow this link, I have the instructions there. Or you can just go to bigquery.cloud.google.com and import the project. It's, the name is just HCP Archive, and hopefully answer all of your burning web performance questions. Thank you. <laughs>